Good morning, people of the internet. We just did our pre-trip, got our coffee. It's already spilt. Oh, that's strong coffee. That's real coffee. That's man's coffee. Wow. Woo. Uh, I got a simple breakfast today. Protein bar. Uh, that's my breakfast of choice when I'm in a hurry and they don't got anything good to eat for breakfast in the tiny truck stop that I'm at. We're in Tower City, North Dakota, which is between Fargo and uh, Valley City or between Fargo and Jamestown if you're familiar with uh, I-94 in North Dakota. We're headed westbound. We're going to go up to Jamestown and then take US-52 and wind our way all the way up to Portal, North Dakota, which is right on the Canadian border. We're going to cross into North Portal, Saskatchewan, which is on the other side of the border. The border goes right through the town. Portal and North Portal. And from there, we're gonna go through Saskatchewan up past Moose Jaw, and then west towards Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I don't like to talk politics a lot in my in my vlog, so uh, I'll keep this short. But Alberta, good for you, good for you. If you're from Alberta, you know what I'm talking about. Good for you. All right, let's uh, let's get going. Okie dokie. All right there then, okay? All right. Let's get going. I already did everything. I did a little, ins did a, an ins a full inspection. I did a little tug test just to make sure my trailer's not gonna fall off. I'm always paranoid of that in the mornings because, you know, I've heard of these horror stories of morons in the truck stop parking lots like pulling other drivers fifth wheel pins maybe because they don't like them or just for fun i don't know why they would do that uh it's evil and what that does if you're not familiar with trucks when you pull a fifth wheel pin uh that unlocks the trailer from the truck so if you have a lot of weight on your trailer the, the trailer will still sit on your truck and might stay on your truck for a little while because of all the weight and just the friction of the trailer on the truck, right? But as soon as you get on the highway or you go over a big bump, that trailer isn't actually attached and it could go flying off the back of your truck and sometimes it has, you know, up to like 50,000 pounds on it, maybe even more. And that could go flying off into traffic or oncoming traffic. It's, it's scary that people do this, but I've never seen it done personally, but I've seen, you know, stuff on Facebook where it happened to people. So it's, it's not common, it's rare, but it's still pretty scary to think about. So always double check, triple check. Just make sure that no one messed with your rig while you were sleeping. More often than not, people steal your fuel at night and that's annoying too, because fuel's expensive. And you'll find one of your fuel caps not screwed on or something because people are just, some people are just plain evil. But remember they are the minority, the, the severe minority. The absolute overwhelming majority of people are, are good people. Continuing two kilometers on I-94 West. So like she said, 82 kilometers, about 50 miles. And we'll be at Jamestown and we're gonna then join the two-lane highway crew and be on two-lane highways all the way up until we get to the Trans-Canada later tonight. I guess that would be at Moose Jaw. So I've got this load of styrofoam insulation or styrofoam behind me. I don't know if it's insulation, it's styrofoam. And it's super light. The whole load weighs just over 5,000 pounds. But to the truck, which is used to pulling a lot more than that, like let's say up to 50, like I said, 50,000 pounds, it feels like I have nothing on the trailer behind me. But what I do have is a nice aerodynamic load compared to other loads. The, the air doesn't catch this as much. So my fuel economy has been great. Yesterday, I averaged over the 1,000 kilometers or so or 600 miles that I drove yesterday, I averaged 27 liters per 100 kilometers, which is almost nine miles per gallon. Nine miles per US gallon, just so you know. Wow. That is the best I've ever done with this truck. Once again, my theory is being proved true. So the speed that I was going was 60 miles an hour, 95 kilometers an hour, somewhere in there. That's a speed that I feel is comfortable, that I'm not holding up traffic a lot. I'm on a four lane highway. People can easily go around me. I'm not being a huge obstacle. There's a lot of trucks out there that are already only governed at 60 miles an hour. So, you know, I'm part of their little crew. But if I catch up to anyone going slower than me, I've got a lot more uh, that I can do to get around them yet. I'm not stuck behind them. 
So that's something I do on the four lane highways when people can easily get around me and the traffic isn't too heavy. Remember, if you want to do this as well, and try this to be considerate and courteous of drivers behind you. And uh, if they can't get around you, I mean, if you're on two lane highway, like for the rest of today, after these 50 miles, we're going to be on a two lane highway on US 52. Then it turns into uh, what, Highway 39 in Saskatchewan, right? 39? Yeah, and then it takes you all the way up to Saskatchewan. On a two lane highway, if there's people behind me, I'm going to do the speed limit. Okay, I'm not going to be one of those drivers that holds everybody up. That That's annoying on a two lane highway. And you know, and when there's a passing lane, I'm actually going to slow down, let them get around me instead of speeding up at the passing lane. You guys notice that that's like a trend on two lane highways? And I know you Americans, you guys are blessed and lucky. You guys don't have to travel two lanes as much as us because you got these big four lane interstates everywhere, which is awesome. Uh, in Canada, we have a lot, lot more two lane highways, like thousands and thousands of miles of just two lane that we have to go. And Canadian drivers know this. When you are following someone who's going slower than you want to go, and you get finally get to where they have a designated passing lane, you're like, yes, it's time to pass. Woo! You pull out to pass them, and they speed up every time. And then if you try and honk at them when you finally do get beside them, they give you the bird. Like it's like it's like you're the problem. And then they won't let you pass, so you got to go back in behind them. And then as soon as the passing lane is over, they slow right back down. I know, again, not a lot of people do this, but there is a good number of people that do it. If you're one of those people, maybe you do it unconsciously. Try to try to pay attention to your speed when you're when there's people behind you. If you're on the two-lane highway and, and these trucks are right behind you all the time, that means they want to go faster than you. So try and make it easy for them to get around you because they're not going to hold you up. They want to go faster than you. I understand you want to keep people behind you so that they don't pass you and slow down. Don't do that either. I, I feel like I, I, I shouldn't have to talk about this kind of stuff. This is sort of like common sense to me. You know, if people want to go faster than me, I make it easy for them to get around me and then they're out of my hair. But, and then I, then I stay going faster than them, right? Don't forget that. That's a very important part too. They let me around them, or if they let me around them because I want to go faster, I actually go faster than them, so I'm not holding them up now. Oh. <laughs> These are the things I have to deal with every day, year after year. I can talk about it all I want. People won't learn. It'll still happen. But at least maybe you can have a good attitude about it. And when you see somebody behind you, you can be that good person. Try not to speed up when there's a passing lane. It's easy to do because it's a wider highway then, right? Just try not to do that. Remember that statue I was telling you about? It's right here on the right, past this sign that says Chieftain Motel. It's right there on the right. He's giving the Nazi salute. Look at him. <laughs> right on Main Street, Carrington, North Dakota. <laughs> Man, can you imagine? If I do that, that's a very, very bad thing. Man, I can get kicked off of YouTube for doing that. Apparently, it's okay if they do it. I couldn't believe that the first time I saw that. <laughs> I had to take a double take. I was like, wait, what? What? On Main Street? <laughs> now, I think that that obviously means something different in the, in the native Indian culture. It means like, hello, or something like that, right? But this is 2019. I think that's pretty much the universal sign for Nazis, right? Everybody... Everybody's all scared of these Nazis everywhere. Nazis over here, Nazis over there. You got a Nazi statue right there on Main Street. Turn left on US 52. 
<laughs> uh, oh well. I, I always thought it was a little funny. I figured I'd share that with you. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to stop in at Casey's General Store right here. Uh, hopefully find a nice little US grass area for uh, Chevy to go out because I couldn't take him for too much of a walk where we got up because everything was mud. I didn't want his feet to get all muddy, so I'm going to stop here and hopefully find some nice grass. It won't be dry because everything's still wet, but hopefully it at least won't be mud. What is this guy's load? That looks fun. Look at that big barrel. Ah, that must have something to do with oil. We are in oil country right now. Look at that thing. That's beautiful. Love to haul something like that. Oh, it does look kind of muddy here. Ah, everything is so muddy. You know what? I don't recommend doing this, but I'm just going to nose in just this time so that... Oh, this is bumpy. So that uh, I can walk Chevy on the grass here and not have to walk through all this mud. Just this time. I'm going to leave enough room for the steps there. Okay. Look at all that grass right there, Chevy. Look at all this grass right here. No mud. Good. Flying J in Minot, North Dakota here. The last Flying J where I can grab fuel before we get to Canada. So naturally, I'm going to fill up the tanks here. I believe it's about $3 a gallon here for the diesel fuel. Whereas if you go up to Canada, I'm probably going to pay a lot more than that. <laughs> Let's do the math here. One second. Let me reason to waste fuel sitting here waiting let's see uh, let's say it's three dollars a gallon here that's let's do in US prices three dollars a gallon divided by 3.78 so that would be about 79 cents American per liter three dollars a gallon whereas in Canada right now I, uh, it's hard to do it with the conversions so maybe I should just do this in Canadian Canadian uh, one second here Three USD to CAD. You're not going to say it? Okay, four dollars exactly. So three dollars American equals four dollars Canadian. So four dollars per gallon. Divide that by three point seven eight. So we're paying about a dollar six here per liter. And in Canada, we're paying at least a dollar twenty-five, a dollar thirty. So we're saving quite a bit per liter. Uh, in U.S., let's see. see. How much would that be in U.S.? Yeah. 1.3 CAD to USD. One Canadian dollar and 30 cents equals 97 United States cents. Okay, so 97 U.S. cents per liter times 3.78. So gas prices in Canada, when converted to U.S. prices, is three dollars and sixty-seven cents per gallon, and that's in the cheap part of Canada, and that's before the carbon tax. Now that the carbon tax is here, prices are going up. In B.C., it's even higher, a lot higher. So we'll see. Now that Alberta has joined the ranks of people who are against the carbon tax, I think that maybe we have stand a good chance at getting it eliminated because it's a big cash grab that takes money out of our pockets that could go to food to put on my table and it does nothing. Like I'm not slowing down driving at all. I still have to deliver my freight. I still have to burn the fuel I have to burn to get the freight from point A to point B. There's no alternative for me. I have to do this. It's how I put food on the table. So it's not really fair to take money out of my pocket when you don't provide me with a viable alternative, right? Anyways. Enough of that. Ah, this guy should be done fueling soon and then we can get fuel. I'm gonna go inside and have a shower after that. And then we're in Canada, hour and a half or so and we'll be in Canada. I wanted to stop at the gym today in Moose Jaw, but I'm running kind of tight on time. I have to deliver this freight tomorrow as early as possible in Calgary. So it looks like maybe we'll go to the gym in Calgary tomorrow. I don't know if you can tell or not, but we just entered the nation of Canada. And we are now on Highway 39. 
We have still like a full day's drive to Calgary. We have seven and a half hours available to us to drive today yet, and the rest we'll do tomorrow morning. And uh, I'm not doing my usual 60 mile an hour anymore. I'm doing the full speed limit that I can legally do because we need to get this load unloaded tomorrow. We need to get unloaded tomorrow and get reloaded because I just realized that when I'm filming this, this coming Friday, the day after tomorrow is Good Friday. So, nothing's open. We can't work on Good Friday. Well, I'll be driving, but uh, this weekend is Easter. So in order for me to get home for Easter, I have to get unloaded and reloaded tomorrow and book it home. I have a load that's delivering in Winnipeg. I think, uh, I guess that would be Monday, Easter Monday. But I hope you guys, uh, you guys are watching this after the Easter season. I hope you guys had a great Easter celebration. It's always a... Uh, a great season. It also signifies the beginning of spring. For those of you who may not be religious, take it as a nice holiday right before spring to celebrate all the nice weather ahead. For me, Easter has some special significance and if possible, I like to be home for it. We got a slow moving train crossing the road here, do we? Wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of invention, something that we could create or construct? Kilometers. Turn left on 39. Wouldn't it be nice if she would stop interrupting me? What I was trying to say is, wouldn't there be? Wouldn't it just be amazing if we could just construct something so that the train could pass by and we could pass by at the exact same time? You know, like passing over the train or maybe passing under the train. I don't know. These are things that uh, don't exist out here, apparently. Dad, why did they stop? I don't know, man. Train stopped right on the road. <laughs> Just my luck. I also had a long wait at the border, a really long wait. Oh, just started to move again. I had to wait an hour at the border just to cross. And when I got to the to the window, less than 30 seconds and I was cleared to go through. But I had to wait an hour to get up to the window. So it's been uh, delay after delay today. At least I'm on Canadian hours of service now, so I have two extra hours to drive. But I only have... Four hours, 49 minutes left on my 16 hour day now. So we'll get as far as we can and it'll be a short night just stopping for our minimum eight hour requirement. Requirement? Requirement? And then we'll be off. I'm hoping to be able to unload like before noon tomorrow, but it looks like it might be afternoon, which means we're gonna have to rush to get reloaded, like rush, rush. At least my reload isn't too far away from where I'm unloading, so. Hopefully it'll all work out. Otherwise I'll be sitting in Calgary till Monday morning. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Three days I'll be sitting around in Calgary. I mean, Calgary's a great place to hang out. It's not like that's a bad thing. So I'd rather spend that time at home. You know, I had to spend last weekend hanging out in Wisconsin already. So I'd, I'd like to go home, but trucking, you know, we'll just let trucking decide. Beautiful out here though. Oh, the weather is finally, finally agreeing. Look at this. Just absolutely gorgeous out here. That train's moving pretty good now already. Wow, that was fast. Before we get started, I wanna give a quick shout out to Transportation Nation Network. I have partnered with them to bring you the best in trucking entertainment and trucking news on the web. Go to their website, transportationnation.com, and you will find that it is your one-stop shop for everything trucking. There's a lot of great trucking shows and entertainment there as well. I encourage you to go, sign up on their website, and subscribe to their shows so you don't miss any. I hope to see you there. 
Link is down below in the description.